Okay. Uh, good morning again. God is good. And all the time. It's amazing. I wish all of you get to stand here one day for something or the other and see this beautiful people right in front of you. You know, Each one of you are so precious and thank God for the church that we have. So as the children walk, I'm just going to share something that has uh, been with me in my heart for last month and a half or so. And in the process of learning, thinking, uh, trying to read, there's so many things that is so beautiful uh, that I wanted to share. But I will keep it to 25 minutes. If I skip some slides, Benji has already sent it across. I would really encourage you to go through those slides and spend some time later. But to start off, uh, this is called as The Shepherd's Pursuit. Uh, there's a beautiful book called Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer. I've read a little bit. I've not gone through it. But the title of Pursuit actually kind of came from there as I was thinking about the shepherd and the sheep. So it's going to be a mixture of perspectives as we read through the Psalm 23. May not be as usual that we would look at. Uh, if you want to condemn me later, please uh, come and chastise me. I'm okay. But I'm going to just speak my heart out however the Lord has been leading because I've been praying. So the best part was today, usually I wake up by 5.30 but I woke up at 5 and I said, uh, okay, let me pray. Uh, I've been, I get to share God's word many places, thank God for that. But it's very special when I get to share in the church because this is where you have grown and 16 years of your life when you find uh, spent in a church and look at people, uh, it's a great blessing to be around. So to start off with, the introduction to the topic is going to be through a quiz. So that's an easier way of trying to introduce the topic. So I'm going to ask five questions. I wanted to get a specific chocolate which I couldn't because I forgot yesterday and I thought remembering, remembering, but I only picked up something very simple on the way. Uh, Joel has it in his hand. This is for all those, uh, please forgive me, last time we did it for the kids. This quiz is for all those who are below 60. Uh, uh, for the seniors and elders, next time when I come up, we will do, okay? Just to introduce the thought of pursuit is a very kind of an old English word, but it has this very deep meaning of not giving up, okay? It's like chasing after. Typically in India, the best example is when you have, you're driving a bike, you're going in the night, and there's a mad dog which wants to bite you. You're like, you're hopping your legs around, but that is still chasing you. Okay, there's one dog here, when you go across, it chases on your car also. There's something like, you will never give up, is heart after. Okay, you're continuing to do it, and you will do it till you get it. And that's the thought uh, we wanted to share with you, is act of pursuing, chasing, or striving after. Okay, the quiz will start now. I just need to do uh, you a small help. You may have to just raise your hands and stand up. It's okay. Just feel free. It's me only in that sense, okay? Uh, so it is us, okay? We are a family. As much as it's serenity of a service, but we are a family. You know, we were reading uh, Aaron and me and with our children. In the old times in church in Acts, they met every day. They ate every day. They were a family. As much as we have uh, systems in place, but yet we are also family because we share with each other. So the first question, remember the age limit. How many times has the word shepherd been mentioned in the Bible? There is no accurate word. So I would give it to you if you say plus or minus so. Take 10 seconds. How many times the word shepherd has been mentioned in the Bible? Anyone? You can guess. Okay, no, no problem. Just try it out. If not, I will call out names. So I'm very good at it because I do it in my classes very often. So uh, youth, please go ahead and try it out. Let's not waste the time. The time of the quiz is not included in my sermon. Uh, just to... Uh, anybody? Anybody? Somebody said. 50? Who is this, please? May I? Ah, okay. <laughs> Vinodaka gets it right. It's around 50 times and more. Joel will give a small chocolate. Can we clap for her, please? <laughs> All right. So what does that give you an idea of? So the shepherd is not only in the Old Testament, but it is across the 66 books of the Bible. You have 66 books? Even though you may find the shepherd may be mentioned or concentrated in a book, but it's definitely something you and I should learn about because it's mentioned more than 50 times, almost equal to every book. Second question, how many times has the sheep been mentioned in the Bible? 
Yes. So just to give you a contrast between the shepherd and the sheep. I'm going to call out somebody otherwise. You can sit and answer. Sorry, that's okay. Anna, five hundred. Okay, five hundred and more times. We'll give it to Chandra. Na, thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know. He has done some math calculation in his mind. Maybe fifty times ten or something like that. But it is more than five hundred times. Okay. Now, a little intro to that. So you have five hundred times the word sheep being mentioned across the Bible. that means sheep are very very important actually there are no other animal that is mentioned as much as it is mentioned about a sheep so there is a huge large number of verses in the bible which actually relate to sheep and we will come back to that third question listen to the question it's the first part is easy the second part is a little tricky who was the first shepherd and the last shepherd of the old testament I mean, I had to find out uh, who is the last shepherd. Uh, it was not easy for me, also. Okay, somebody from the youth. Okay, I will give it to you. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Absolutely, Abel is the first shepherd. Last shepherd. I'll give you a clue. It's from the minor prophets. One of the minor prophet. Yes, Sharon. Amos. Okay, you will get one, and Sharon gets one chocolate. All right. Uh, thank you. So. Um, another thought from there remember when abel actually went to sacrifice what did he sacrifice he sacrificed a sheep so that was the first time the profession so called of shepherd and sheep started and it is very very important for us to go back to something called the first mention of the bible i kind of shared this when we talked about worship last time whenever you study the scriptures i think it is important for us to go back and say where was it first mentioned so abel and amos was a prophet who was called out and god used him to uh, share his word the last one which is the last verse in the bible where shepherd is mentioned if you had seen the powerpoint you will guess it but either ways if you have not in which book do you find the last mention of the word shepherd similar it, i may be not absolutely correct but according to whatever i know anybody else okay somebody from the left last side you know peter mentioned it right it's about the shepherd and the leading of the church and you know that leadership and shepherds mention you go to hebrews you will find something there about the blood and the sacrifice do you have anything in revelation i'm giving you a clue also Okay, Shiva, try. She is our quiz master. Revelations. By any chance, you would get guess the book. Book where it says, "For the Lamb will be on the throne." Well, give it to Shiva, Auntie. It's Revelations chapter seven, verse seventeen, where it says very powerfully. We will look at that. For the Lamb on the midst of the throne shall be their shepherd. So here you have two thoughts: shepherd and sheep, starting from Genesis. all the way through revelation mentioned 50 times mentioned 500 times so there is something that is so important about these two that becomes very personal to us so that is what i wanted to share with you today i'm not done one last but it's a very challenging word which is a hebrew word for the word shepherd it's easy if you remember it you remember jehovah Jaira is what God provides. Jehovah Rapha is healer. Jehovah Rohi Sharan I'll give it to you. You will get another one. I think Joey went out to the Sunday school. Thank you. It's called Jehovah Rohi. It is derived from the word Ra which means provider, someone who provides the food. Okay. I will not ask you the last one. <laughs> Anyone who would try to try recite psalm 23 reverse that's what we are going to do we will skip that let's pray father in heaven you are not only the father god but you are the shepherd god the great shepherd the great i am lord we pray anoint each one of us with your holy spirit lord who are we lord or what am i that you have led us thus far except for your love that loves a love that cares and a love that continues to be there for us in Jesus name we pray amen 
I will be a little quick, uh, uh, try, uh, allow me to do so. Just listen to me as I read this. This is going to be Psalm 23, starting from verse 6 all the way backward to verse 1. You can close your eyes and listen to it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup to run forth. Even though I walk through the valley of shadows of death, I will not fear uh, no evil. For you are with me, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You know, when I was thinking of it, and I was thinking, why not study this psalm upside down? You know, it is really powerful because uh, uh, when I, I asked Bina to look at the PowerPoint, and she said, hey, why, why all, uh, other way around? And one of the beautiful things I looked at is, it says, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just stay with me. And the first part is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So there are these two, the Lords, in Psalm 23. And all that is in between is sandwiched between the first verse and the final verse. So the first verse, David is saying, the Lord is my shepherd. And the last verse, he says, I shall dwell in the house of the shepherd forever. That means between the day that you are born again and between the day you are going to be glorified and you're going to get a place in heaven, all that in between the life that we live is what the psalmist is talking about. You need food, you will go through the valleys, you will have problems, you will have enemies. Yet, in between all of this is sandwiched your faith. I start with the Lord, I will end with the Lord, and all that I live, I get to know the Lord. And that is the beauty of this beautiful psalm that goes along. And as I read through Psalm 23 this time, I came about four more passages. We are not going to go into detail. But please, encourage uh, yourself to read these parallel passages as along with Psalm 23, is Ezekiel 34, John 10, and Revelation 7. Let me just derive two points from here. The shepherd in uh, Psalm 23 is the Lord, Yehovah, Jehovah, is also the shepherd, uh, David, because he became the shepherd of Israel, and it is also Jesus Christ which shows what he did. The shepherd in 34, Ezekiel 34, are the Israelites. People who were given power over Israel, the leaders of Israelites, who were very bad shepherds. They were very selfish. They were thinking of themselves. They were the people of God. But finally in 34, God says, enough with you guys. I will be my people's shepherd. In John chapter 10, it's about Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. And in Revelation 7, it is about the lamb who is a shepherd. Contrast these two, all the four passages to the sheep. You will find David who connotates himself as a sheep. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. That's why he wrote it. It is also for all the Israelites. They take it, this psalm very, very personally and they keep it uh, very close to their heart. In Ezekiel 34, the sheep are the Israelites who are scattered away. In John 10, are the Christians who believe in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I will keep you. And in Revelation, it is the believers. There's a small difference between Christians and believers. I will come back to that. Uh, I just want to tell you, we did a whole study on David's life and we got to thank uh, Dr. DJ Uncle for that. And we learned a lot from David's life a year ago. But quickly let me just share with you, not reading the scriptures, just follow with me. The biography of David goes like this. Samuel the prophet goes to anoint him. Where does he find? He's the last son of Jesse. He's not so greatly skilled. He is just a shepherd boy, not a soldier. Where does he find? He's in the shepherd. He's with the sheep, leading the sheep when uh, Samuel goes to anoint him. He, they don't even consider him to be one of the options for to be the king. But yet he is so. But finally, he starts as a shepherd. He goes, defeats Goliath. And then he recognizes, Saul recognizes that he is anointed. God chooses him. He becomes the king. He leads the people. He falls into sin. He comes back. He has a son. God promises him. And with David's desire, he tries to build a temple, but God says, you will not build, Solomon will build a temple. And this whole aspect of David is one that actually comes out in Psalm 23. And each and every aspect of Psalm 23 is very, very crucial. I'll go to the next part. 
the Lord is my shepherd. I will just concentrate on verse 1 and 6 for today and the rest one, maybe we'll just look at it. Now I have to ask this question to ourselves. It's very easy to skip the capitalized word L-O-R-D, Lord. The question is, who is this Lord? Good, I have a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. But most of us, most of me, all my life, I thought it was just Jesus. Yes, it is true. Jesus is the shepherd. But actually, when you go back and read a capital L-O-R-D in Hebrew means Yahweh or Yahweh or Jehovah. So this is a name given to God was the name that he revealed to Moses in the burning bush again when Moses was doing shepherding. And he says, I am who I am. So this Jehovah that we are talking about is the great I am who has become my shepherd. Now the I am is with me and I will not be in want. That is what the David was saying. And as I was thinking of it over the last few more days, you know, and I was thinking, oh, there is Jehovah Jireh also there. For the Lord will provide everything that I need. And this is Jehovah Rapha also in Psalm 23 because he heals. And there is there's also Jehovah Nishi which says Jehovah is my banner, my victory. When he says, you prepare a table before me in front of my enemies. And later down only to realize there's somebody who wrote <laughs> Psalm 23 with all Jehovah's name in it. And I was so thrilled to read it. So I'll read it for you. Please listen to me. It says, I will read the God's name. I will not read the verses. He is Jehovah Ra, Ra the Lord my shepherd. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace. Jehovah Rofi, the Lord my healer. Jehovah Shekinu, my righteousness. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is present. The Jehovah Ezer, the Lord my help. Jehovah Nishi, the Lord my standard of victory. Jehovah Inkadesh, the Lord my holy, my sanctification. Jehovah Mana, the portion. Jehovah Shelek, the Lord my inheritance. So we'll be looking at Lord my inheritance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Let's just wait there. What does this word surely mean to you and me? I, uh, it is an emphatic word. It's, it's as if like it's dogmatic. You can't be wrong about it. And you, people say you're wrong, you're still, you think you're right. You know, is that assurance? Surely, David is saying 100%, no doubt, absolute. What two things will happen to me? Goodness and mercy will follow me. I know it's a very interesting time. Next time when you have time, please mark these words. Me, my, and I in Psalm uh, 23, you will find out of six verses, there are more than 15 times he keeps writing me, my, I. So it's a very personal psalm. And it became personal psalm to David because he was in such a close relationship with God. And we can write a psalm for ourselves wherever we are. I think God has best us for that. So goodness is an attribute of God. I think it's a very good book to read. Attribute of God by uh, Tozer. Again, it's an amazing book. He gives you a different characters of God. So when I was thinking how to explain the goodness of God, it, it just encamps everything. You know, today I stand is the goodness of God. Today we have a church is the goodness of God. Today I have a breath is the goodness of God. Today I could eat in the morning is the goodness of God. So all of our life is engulfed in God's blessing and that is God's goodness. And he says, it will follow me, not one day till I'm 40 or, you know, not only when I'm 60. But he says, all the days of my life, not the days when I spend time with the Lord in the morning. Even if I don't spend time with the Lord in the morning, still the goodness of God will follow me. And mercy, another translation says, loving kindness. One of the root words of loving kindness is a root word which comes from the word agape, which is called unconditional. So this shepherd will show me goodness irrespective of me being who I am and that goodness will follow every day of my life and that is because he is good, not anything about me. So we have a good shepherd who is showing loving kindness to us no matter what. And he says, I shall dwell in the Lord's house forever. I, read, I learned this this season of my life. I didn't know this earlier. The dog that you see, see there is called a sheep dog. Okay. And for those of us who know about it, 
the sheep dogs are very much and they are very specifically trained by the shepherds to take care of the flock it is like this uh, what picture benji showed you you have shepherd sheep scattered around the hillside and when shepherd is here he calls out and you have two dogs one on the right one on the left and they will run criss cross across the sheep drawing back the sheep towards the sheep pen so they are engulfing the sheep on their right and on their left and one of the commentators says dear believers this is goodness on one side mercy on one side engulfing you so that you enter into god's kingdom and that's the picture when you give a personification you know surely goodness and mercy they are not persons but it says he will follow me nobody can follow me unless you personify so it is a beautiful poetry for us to understand that god is good because he is good he pursues us irrespective of what i do and that's the love of christ in our lives okay you prepare a table before me i will take one minute to just to introduce these slides and i'll go and it is a fantastic verse because sometimes you wonder do i have enemies uh, we do have <laughs> there there are enemies who are good enemies who are bad but we do face people in our lives both spiritually and physically one of the other topics that i was praying and leading and trying to remember and study was spiritual warfare there is absolute spiritual warfare the day you get i mean not only baptized but the day you come to the lordship of jesus christ and if you get baptized it will be almost like a you wearing a red tie where nobody is wearing a red tie and walking around this world but just to say there is focus on you as we walk along with light and as we walk along with the lord so this picture i want you to take 10 seconds and look at it somebody who made it had a very beautiful revelation of this verse it looks scary thankfully no kids the children are around but if you look at it as you start from the forefront you have a serpent who is nailed you go back to the prophecy what god said to adam when they had sinned that very serpent which caused them to sin he said you shall trample it under your feet and as you go da up you have a beautiful table two chairs you and the lord finally our walk in the life it is not about anybody else it's between you and me it's you and god and nobody else and you behind you will see the lord with the shepherd's crook so what we understand in this is that when jesus a great shepherd died for us on the cross he totally nullified the power of the enemy the so called satan and he defeated him to the very depth of a defeat they don't have a power over us but yet many times even i have lived as if you know satan has power over us it's up to us to take the power that god has given us in our life as the great shepherd has put into us the righteousness that is why the verse says he will read me in the paths of righteousness for his name sake not mine but if i follow him then only i will be able to win victories in our lives as i go to the next one the difference between the rod and a staff is very small the rod is a short stout which is actually filled with spikes that means it is meant for the enemy the lion or the bear that comes along but the staff is a gentle uh, curve wherein it is meant for the sheep when you go astray god pulls you back that is where discipline comes in we have besetting sin our children make a mistake we need to discipline we need to bring them back to the fold and that's what shepherd does john 10 is a very good example of what these two mean <coughs> i'll not go there but if you remember what um, chandrana prayed and jacob uncle prayed during the prayer is that jesus says nobody can snatch you out of my hands and not even from my father's hand so this good shepherd is giving us an assurance of his presence one of the pictures of uh, shepherding or when they hired shepherd in the earlier days was they used to have a pen and the shepherd used to take care of the sheep in the night that's why jesus says a hireling doesn't come by the gate he runs away he comes by another door the concept was that sometime shepherd used to lie down as a gate so that he will recognize if any sheep went out of the pen 
so he would be lying there as a door and that is where jesus says i am the door nobody comes to the father except for me so it is so beautiful to understand how that meant for them and how it means for us at this time this was another beautiful revelation beautiful understanding you are with me actually when you split the verses of uh, psalm 23 i think it was uh, 2009 10 when i first studied this psalm and what caught my attention was this word you are with me it is in the center of the verses that means all that matters to me is that my shepherd is with me assurance of presence god's presence in our life and what you see here is in the morning the shepherd goes before the sheep because sheep can see okay they are not very good at seeing but they are good at hearing that is why jesus says my sheep will hear my voice not see and that is another reason we say as a sheep you and i should not live by faith but not live by faith and not by sight we can't see very well we are the sheep in this case it says in the morning he leads them but when it becomes in the night you know what happens he draws back and he comes to the center of the herd because they will walk only by hearing his voice isn't that beautiful good times in our life when we are living with the lord lord leads us but the difficult times in our life when we need him by our side he is in the very midst of it he is not standing somewhere far away he is with the sheep as he leads them even though i walk through the valley of shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod your staff they comfort me i was asking this question for myself how does the valley look for you and me it may look very different from the valley that the shepherd talked about our valleys may be ups and downs our valleys may be ill health our valleys may be mental tension our valleys may be challenges in the family our valleys may be challenges at workplace but you know what in all of this god is with me david says in first samuel 17 your servant used to keep sheep for his father and when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock i went after him struck him delivered it out of their mouth that is a passionate shepherd the one who went after the lost sheep so the last few thoughts that i wanted to leave with you is one thing i wanted to mention having uh, been there in shilo you know it was a great blessing god really enabled many many of our friends to be able to help that event to happen as i was reading this i understood that shadow valley of shadow of death or the word shadow of death is a single word which in the translate salamat means it is a very deepest darkness one of the commentators says it is only not a darkness or a deep darkness the deepest darkness that comes and overfills someone's soul wherein they are unable to break out to god you know why i'm saying this is uh, i happened to meet a boy uh, during shilo you know it was such a hard thing to see that the greatest challenge for our youngsters now is not education they study very well this guy was doing internship in another college but you know what he was going through such deep emotional trouble within himself and we had a dear friend who actually is a psychiatrist also a wonderful believer speak and we have a great challenge as a church as elders as youngsters to meet the needs of those who are going through mental trauma and mental stress huge mental stress so this this valley of shadow of death looks very different for all of us for youngsters it is very very different and we need to be there i know i i really pray that god will help us to be there for them and pray and just to listen to talk to them and david was saying not only when you know all things were good but when i was depressed when i was running away when i was hiding myself in cave and i didn't know why saul was upset with me he's saying in that oh lord yahweh the great i am you are my shepherd he makes me lie down in green pastures i will share this and go to the next thought you know this is a picture that i always imagined when i looked about green pastures this is how i thought okay it's a beautiful stream you know when you ask someone uh, to write draw a picture you will draw a nice mountain and a house and a stream passing by few trees that's a picture of calmness but you know this is not the reality when the psalm was written you know what is the reality this was a reality this is actual bethlehem or jerusalem it is a very rugged place 
It's filled with mountains and stones. You will rarely find a green patch. So as I looked at it, I really understood that there was no green pastures all the time. It was very rare when the sea actually brought moisture and there was very little bit of rain. You will find grass here and there, you know. You will find between the rocks, between the hills. And the sheep had to go there and pick and it was only one mouth at a time. And it wasn't very easy for the shepherd to lead them. After they eat one mouth, they had to look up to the shepherd for the next mouth. And this is what David was trying to teach us or share with us that it is not this green valley that we see all the time. It may be the mountains, it may be the valley, you know, dryness in our life. This is actually the picture of holy city or the holy Jerusalem, what we call it as. So we, uh, some time back we, we didn't go to Jerusalem for all of us who have visited. I think it's a fantastic blessing. If any of us plan a tour in next 10 years, uh, for my age people, I think we should plan a tour to go to uh, Israel and see because this comes to reality. We watched a TV show wherein it really became reality for us to see what was it written. So there is a dichotomy, I should say, between what we are reading now and what was written then. And the challenge of understanding the scripture is not only applying to ourselves, but go back and see how it was written. And when David says, you lead me in green pastures, it was that dependence, absolute dependence on God that he was saying, Lord, even though it may be dry, I'll still trust you. The Lord is my shepherd and this Lord is Jehovah. As I close, uh, I come to three applications and I'll close. It's 20 minutes. Okay, triune God. This just came through. I just made it into a thing. Uh, I hope that you will be able to learn and develop onto it. So I was asking, is there a Trinitarian government in Psalm 23? Because somehow I feel every part of the Bible has triune God. And for us to teach the Trinitarian government, I never thought of it, but yet it is there. So there is triune God, three person in one in Psalm 23. Jehovah the Father is a provider. Jesus the Son is a protector. Holy Spirit the Lord is the anointing. I skip that, but if you study, you anoint my head with oil, is that oil which talks about the very oil which flowed down from Aaron's head to his feet when he was anointed. That is the same oil which Samuel anointed David and made him the king. It is the same oil of the Holy Spirit will be anointed to you the day you believe in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It's the same gift of the Holy Spirit. So you will find triune God in Psalm 23. What about shepherding as a leader? Many of us are leader and each one of us are leader. You know, to live like a shepherd. To live a life like a shepherd. To love like a shepherd, to lead like a shepherd. Isn't it challenging? I've had a privilege to know beautiful men in my life who have lived, loved and lead like Jesus and I look up to them. It is a great blessing because you know what, you will not find people who will do it without any cause, very rarely. So each one of us youngsters and for those of us who are in leadership, even to lead one, can we do it with a shepherd's heart, with a shepherd's pursuit, one person in our lives? I, I wanted to apply it to our family life, whether it's a husband or a wife. Any time when you say a shepherd, it's always connected to the husband. <laughs> Not only the husband, but also the wife is a shepherd, is a good shepherd because they cook very well. So what is the role of parenting? Promise. You promise your children that you will stay with them. You protect them. You provide them. You provide them with all health. You know, we have been able to, again, goodness of God. Many of our children are studying in the best of the schools, getting best of the education, but we never should make less of it because it is God's provision. You know, I, I just want to challenge young, young, peer, young fathers like me. Uh, can, we, can we spend time with our children with no intention? You know, difficult question for me itself. Can I take off just sit with my children and not do anything. That is where we are becoming what God wants us to be. It's not only the physical blessings that we may provide our children, but it is actually the presence that we promise them as they go along. And that is a challenge for us. What about the threefold ministry of a shepherd pastor? I mean, we, we thank God for the leadership of the church, which is teaching which is training, which is tagging along. You can 
please add, you can develop these just the words that came along and I wanted to put it there. Threefold responsibility of a believer. Believe, trust and have faith. If I don't believe, God cannot work for me. If I don't trust, he will not fight for me. If I'm not going to put faith in me, he will not work miracles for me. Because he is willing to do, but I have to give him the permission to do. No, I was telling uh, myself, I was telling my mom in the morning, you will only get so much of God as much as you desire. You will only get so much of God as much as you desire. No one else can put a restriction on you. It's only you yourself. So it is up to us to believe, have faith. The great blessing of the great shepherd will not go there. He was Jesus, the prophet, the priest and the king. As I come to John 10, I just wanted to share with you that it is one of those first passages of the scripture which gave me a great assurance of salvation. Uh, when we come from a CSI background, we don't have much being taught on the Holy Spirit. Nothing, about, nothing against CSI background. But I'm just saying the teaching as we go to the church, I had a big confusion. I remember at the age of 12 or 13, I was totally confused because one of the preachers at that time told me in one of those Lent days, Jesus prayed to the Father. And I was saying, why is Jesus praying to which father in heaven? Because I thought Jesus was God, you know. But yet, to understand this triune God, to understand the role of Jesus as prophet, priest and king, but also God the Father and the Holy Spirit in the sacrifice, in the death, burial of resurrection of Jesus Christ is a great blessing. As we come to the close, Revelation 7, 17 is a very powerful verse. A very powerful verse which really challenges each one of us because this great I am, Jehovah, the great I am, Elohim, the one who is the beginning and the end, the one who is the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, God who was shepherd became a sheep which was sacrificed. Isn't that a great news for each one of us? So it was not somebody else. That great shepherd became a sheep which was sacrificed. And the Bible says, For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will, wipe, he will lead them with springs of living waters and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. Whatever tears that we have today, that will be wiped off. It's the same verse which talks in Revelation chapter 21. 21. He says, On that day, for the Lord shall wipe away every tear from my eyes. So as much as we learn about shepherd in our lives, I want us to just think for the next few minutes. Just be close your eyes. This great shepherd, this great God, humbled himself and became the very sheep which was slaughtered once for all, that people who are sheep like you and me can become his own. You know, 1 Corinthians 7 says, For you were bought with a price. You were bought with a price. And that price was too high. That was the very death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His blood flowed so that I, as a sheep, will be bought into his sheepfold. The Lord is my shepherd. He is with me, but he also is calling me that I, being the shepherd of God, that I will also be his emissary to bring many more sheep into the fold of God. As much as surely goodness and mercy has surrounded me in my life, my family, my friends, I want that goodness and mercy to surround those who come into my life. Is it possible that we can look at the lamb and worship him as a shepherd? And this great shepherd who became a lamb is also calling us, you being my sheep, will you also take the role of a shepherd and lead others wherever you are called? God is a great God. As I like you to just think about it. Again, Chandra Singh, and I mentioned about the 99 sheep the lost sheep parable. There's nothing, you know, no important, I feel it's such a beautiful thing that Jesus said, I will leave the 99 back in the pen. I will go search for the one. 
and that one will never become a great reality to me unless I am that one lost sheep. That parable will become a great value when I put myself as the one who was lost. As you continue in the time of prayer and, and your meditation deep in your hearts, I would like to sing a song as we close. And then just listen to the words and I pray that we will recommit our lives to the shepherd. We like a sheep choose to believe, to trust, to have faith. We being sheep allow him full permission in our lives to lead us and acknowledge that he knows us in and out.
Shall we just stay and stand and sing the bridge? There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't keep down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. great shepherd as you pursue us Lord help us to pursue you help us to never give up on you Lord thank you for your love thank you for your reckless love thank you for finding me out Lord thank you Lord there is no shadow you won't light up Lord there is no mountain that you will climb up Lord there is no wall that you will not kick Lord so that Lord Jesus that I will be found in your presence and Lord, as the psalmist says, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord, for your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kindly be seated.